Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about the fourth step in my creative post process, or one of the fourth steps. I, there's many that fall into this, but my creative post process when working with HDR photographs is good brackets uh, from straight from the camera. The second step is tone mapping, uh, a good tone map photograph. The third step is uh, the post processing of that tone mapped image and the fourth step is the creative post process what you do to exploit that image and exploit some of the stuff in it to really push it in a creative mark this is one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken I'm actually gonna enter this into a show that I have coming up here and I, I love the way this turned out to me it's my one of my favorites uh, the, the angle everything about it I love it and one of the things I love most about it is are these highlight blowouts that are really actually easy to do right here in Photoshop so here's the original straight out of Photomatix. Uh, haven't done anything else to this, just straight out of Photomatix, brought it right into Photoshop. Now I would normally stop in Camera Raw and do some processing on it, but uh, I wanted to just show you how to do the creative post-processing part here today. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have the background selected and press Control J to duplicate that layer. You can also right click and duplicate the layer that way as well by selecting Duplicate Layer. If you're on a Mac, instead of Control Click it's gonna, or Control J, it's going to be Command J. So now with with that duplicate layer, uh, oftentimes I'll even make the background layer invisible. So I know that I always have that background layer to fall back on in case I need it for a source image, in case I need to go back to it for some reason or another. I know I can always access it. So now what I want to do is go to Select and go to Color Range and just select the highlights on this photograph press OK. So you can see all the racing ant lines that are here. The, that's just the highlight. And now I'm going to press Control J on that one. Now that when I press Control J or Command J, it's going to duplicate the layer, but only duplicate what was selected. So if we unclick all this stuff, you'll see there's some little white areas here. It only selected the highlight areas. All right. So now what I want to do is really blur this out and one of the ways I'm going to do that is right click on here and go to convert to smart object and there's a reason why I'm converting this to a smart object before I start using a filter and the reason being is that if I use a filter and it doesn't quite do what I want it to do I can always go back and edit it in a second uh, the second later so I'll show you how that works so we're gonna to go to blur and we're gonna to go to radial blur and we go to radio blur we want we want to be set to zoom and the amount to 100 percent you can with the quality it doesn't really matter here we aren't trying to make it a great quality but i'm just going to put this right here just for just for grins to show you something real quick and press ok so it's going to go through its whole uh you know progress here with the filter and the radio blur now you can see my radio blur doesn't really make sense where it is it's blowing out in an area where um it, it doesn't it's not really adding much to the photograph so what I can do is go to the radio blur section, double click on that, and move that to where I want it to be, and press OK. And just see how where, where this is going to lie now. And the reason why I moved it was because that is a more, um, a f that's my focal point. It's right there in the middle of the photograph. You see the, the branches branching out, then you see the highlights branching out. It just works better that way. So now with that done, we can go ahead and press Control J and duplicate that layer and make it more and more potent as we go through. So what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to go ahead and combine these two layers by pressing Control and clicking on them and then right click and go to Merge Layers. Now they aren't smart objects anymore. I've got my filter where I want it to be. I'm good to go. So now what I want to do is go back to that layer and go to Select and go to Color Range and I'm going to select the shadows. And press OK. Now with the shadows selected, I'm going to click back on that highlight blowout area and make a mask. Now what that did was it masked out all the areas that were shadows, it replaced that area. So it doesn't really look right right now, so if I go ahead and press Control I to invert that layer, I now have the mask for not just the areas that were selected, but the areas that weren't selected. Now the reason why I did that was so that, that those highlight blowout areas aren't affecting my shadows as much as they are and that's going to come into play here in a second. So now what I'm going to do is click on that layer, just the actual layer, not the mask, click on that layer and go to filter and go to blur and now we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And we're going to Gaussian blur this pretty pretty well. Um, 
you know, if we if we just do a, a couple pixels here, it's not going to make a whole lot of a difference. But I want to get a nice band. So instead of these looking like individual rays, it looks like something that was edited. It doesn't necessarily look like something I took out of the camera. Now it could have been, um, but to make it look, I guess, a little bit more realistic in this creative process that we're doing here, I can go ahead and increase the the, the radius to about eight or so, so that those really start to blend together. And press OK. And at this point, you have the liberty to do just about whatever you want to do. So if we look at this photo here, uh, I like that the rays are blowing out here, but I don't necessarily like them in this lower portion of the image like you see in the one that we're working on. So, you know, that's really all about the, the creative eye and what you think is right. So I'm going to go ahead on that mask, I'm going to select the brush size that can go ahead and brush out that area so that it's not so... Uh, bright down there because that's where my eye is coming from. Start down there and work its way to those blowouts. Just be blowouts everywhere. So now I'm going to go to the curves adjustment layer. And the curves adjustment layer, I'm going to increase the, those whites a little bit and decrease on the darks a little bit. Give it a, a nice little S curve here and see what that does for us. All right, that's good. I like that. Now one of the last things I'm going to do is add a hue saturation layer and I'm going to use the little color picker here. Uh, and <clears throat> now if you click and drag on an, on an area of saturation you can select, you can affect the area to, of, of color. So when I click here it says okay that's red. When I click here it says okay that's, that's green or that's yellow. Um, usually greens are found in your yellows ironically. So I'm going to click back on those reds. I'm going to increase that saturation a little bit, but I'm also going to lighten it a little bit too to make it match what we've got going on with those really strong, potent, blown out highlights. So it adds some, some depth to the color that's there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on that the little finger drag again and click on those green areas to, to bring out those greens just a little bit more, uh, just so that my eye goes to those greens and leads its way up to those blowouts a little bit. Maybe we need to darken those up a little bit. And I think that'll probably just about do it for me. So here was the original photograph, or not the original, but the, the post-processed one that I did uh, a couple months ago. And then here is uh, what I've come up with since then, uh, showing you real quick. Now, the blowouts in this one are a little bit more prominent. If I wanted them to be more prominent in this photograph, all I have to do is duplicate that highlight background area. And if it's too much, when you duplicate it, just go to the opacity and drop the opacity so you can get a little bit of that effect at a time and not necessarily get a strong, powerful, uh, overdone blowout area. Now you can also uh, go ahead and, and, and modify the, the blending options of it as well and see what you get there too. So, all right, again, this is everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis and this is part of my four step creative post-processing, I guess my four-step creative HDR processing, I should say. Um, again, it, that four-step creative process starts with good brackets. It then goes into the tone mapping where you want to get a good photograph that is just not too dark, not too light, not too stylized, a good baseline for you to work off of. And maybe just extract the details and exploit the details a little bit and get those layers blended together pretty well. And then the fourth step, or the third step, sorry, I should say, is post-processing. Um, doing your curves adjustments, going into Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and, uh, and really making that image just spruced up a little bit. And then the fourth part is that creative post process where you take it that extra level, you add something to it that, that, uh, that just modifies a little bit and, and makes it pop out as a photograph. So here's, let me just show you the beginning of where we started and where we came from. That's where we started and this is where we are now. So. It's looking pretty good. I like what I've got here. I hope the show goes well for me. Uh, again, like I said before, everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis. Go ahead and subscribe. There's more great tutorials coming to you uh, next week. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.